Hello and welcome to Wangle the Mangle. <laughs> so welcome back to BBB Not a Podcast. We're Bristol Bot Builders. I'm Joe and here with me is Craig. Hey. And Gareth. Hello. We've talked about our robots enough now, so we thought we'd get on someone that we refer to in pretty much every video we do. Bedrock of farm orientated robots. It's Rory Mangles. <laughs> Hello, Rory. Afternoon, gentlemen. How did you start in robot combat, Rory? Back when I was a lad. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Started at university back in back in 2013, the summer of. I met this uh, small, awkward fellow called Alex Shakespeare. He really liked robots. He, he liked them so much he brought them to a lecture. Look how cool my robots are. He spent a while uh, driving around the lecture theatre and he's like, they actually do events with these robots. You get to fight them. They're called Ant Weights. He uh, persuaded me to come along to uh, AWS 42 that I ended up going to as my first event. Which I think it was just a, in a Basing event. Stoke. Basing, Basing Stoke. Stoke. Yeah, great, clap, great clap, uh, uh, slides. Great Water Tesco's. Park. Great Tesco's. Yeah. I went along with this event and said, right, I'm going to build a robot. Bought a couple of parts, two motors and two wheels. Decided to make it out of folded aluminium. Terrible idea. Never built a robot out of aluminium since. So I found an old two-channel transmitter up in the attic with two <laughs> servos attached to it. Took apart the servos, stole the motor connectors to the motors and had a very basic forwards, backwards, left, right speed controller that ran off the uh, servos. Can you find everything in the attic of the farm? Yes. <laughs> it, or one of the sheds. I was going to say, um, you just sort of went to the room of requirements and there was a, a you know, transmitter. It is literally, yes, the farm is servos. literally the room of requirements. Because I didn't have a motor controller for Lionel and I didn't want to buy them, I was like, right, I know how to do you know, basic electronics. I'm sure making a motor controller can't be that hard. Regret ensued. Um, but um, I was at university now. We had a PCB lab, and this this was what I came out with. It was uh, the Tiny Two. It was largely garbage. Um, the other fun fact of this is everything was reversed. All the chips here on this photo have had their legs bent the other way and then soldered on back to front to make it work with the backwards PCB. Um, There's another version that I threw together days before the first event. So this is with Tinny, which was my <laughs> second ever amp weight that I kind of didn't really finish. Worked, but they weren't great and they were a bit big. I like a respectable octopus, this series. <laughs> um, and I made four of them quickly before the event and handed them out to people. As part of testing, we did kitchen-based robot fights after a few beers, <laughs> it being first year of university. That's Glorious you know. kitchen battles. It's like the kitchen floor yeah. and a rag. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's a couple of tea towels um, to make the arena. And you know, you're, and... you're pioneering alcohol and robot combat here, which is the, oh, the ultimate there was so combo. much of it. And Alex would come over with his toolbox. These would usually go on fairly late. So he was walking back at like 1 a.m. Uh, with with his toolbox, and policeman pulled over and was like, oh, "What are you up? What are you up to?" You know, looking, Alex looking slightly shady. And he's like, "Oh, I'm just I'm just doing like robots with with my friends in in, my, in the kitchen." It's like, "Oh, clearly too nerdy to be stealing stuff." So just, just, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, this was AWS 43. Best of a fight against Alex's dad, um, <laughs> which was quite. Uh, I, I decided that using the grammar work, but being being Alex's dad. I'm, I'm, <laughs> he did, did, did drive into the pit almost immediately. So about the same time as that that first event, Aid Bless was happening, um, I found out about a feather event happening just down the road from my house. Because it was at the Fleet Air Arm Museum, which you had to pay to get in to see. But if you had a robot, you could get in for free. <laughs> and that's like, my, my challenge was, could I build a robot for less than the cost of entry? So I can't remember what it was to get in. So I, I kind of set about looking for parts and seeing what I had around. Searching the sheds. So, yes, in the shed I found a nice big uh, 7 amp hour lead acid battery. Um, <laughs> so basically a, a small car battery. Spent £30 on Argos drills because I was like, well, you know, it needs to be built quickly because I have three weeks from finding out about this event to it actually being, having to be ready for the event. This was the very first prototype I built. This was the back side of an old keyboard. <laughs> black bottom <laughs> the keyboard itself had been removed some floppy disk drive dispensers as the wheel hubs <laughs> from the shed um, and the tail is a tube that was used for holding um old ics in integrated circuits <laughs> little yeah they, those little dip chips and all this was cable tied up because i had to make the motor controller for this in three weeks this is what i came up with it was the night before the event i, I spent the entire night writing the assembler code to make this work. So I wanted a lifter like Tormentor that used a linear, linear actuator or something. I did have car jacks. The lawnmower starter motor with 
motorbike gearbox I found in the scrap heap back in like 2003. Um, <laughs> Beautiful. Two bits of box section on the end are old, two old school table legs. And then I tried to work out what the chassis was going to be. So this bit around the outside was a roll cage I built for a go-kart that I never ended up finishing. <laughs> so I had this I had this shape already done. And so eventually I added in the drive motors. They were then held on with pipe clamps. Yeah, it drove fine. You know, motor controller worked. Um, the, the lifter worked surprisingly well. The, the armor was all strips of an old water tank that was pulled out the hedge. It is proper oh, 5 HGP. mil HGP. In black yeah. as well. You're speaking Craig. Oh. It, it's the dream. This was also Alex's first event with Gimli, which is his axe robot. The final fight we did was a melee between me, Alex, and Beauty 2. Beauty 2 at the time was current feather champ and, you know, it won loads of events. And you can see Richie's motor controller immediately dies and then starts working again. Um, my driving is still leaves much to be desired at this point, but uh, Richie gets flipped, gets stuck on its side. Beauty goes into this corner with uh, to try and flip Alex out, and then reverses right onto Richie's forks. Amazing. Slowly and, and humiliatingly lift it up, <laughs> um, <laughs> and kind of deposit it over the edge of the uh, of the arena. Um, this is like Richie's. Unfortunately, at this moment, Alex's robot catches fire and like literal flames pouring out the top. They <laughs> stop the fight at the moment. And so I wasn't able to do anything past this point. Um, but, you know, I counted this as a, as a great, great success at the time. Oh, yeah. Um, being able to, to at least embarrass Beauty Q, if not beat it. I wasn't originally going to enter it in the 2015 champs, so I was like, well, you know what, since it works. Yeah, so this was my fight against Twisted Sister and Hardwired. Hardwired was running a banana as a weapon. Um, <laughs> Twisted Sister was working, but took a little while to get up to speed. Richie can't move unless it lifts something perfectly vertical. And I kind of got out of the pit and said, crap, how am I going to get it off? It kind of just jams in there, so I kind of wiggle it back and forth a bit. And Aww. mercifully it bounces in. And um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so then it's just me and me and Hardwired. Hardwired hadn't really been working great so i um i just had to flip it over and, and yes that was that was best kit but then they were like i popped the banana pop the banana I haven't we had agreed before the fight i wasn't gonna pop the banana except you know they only had one and everyone was like oh you popped the banana that's like, fine okay so i just <laughs> pokes the banana with the fork and it pops and i said like, yeah i've won and then everyone's like you haven't you haven't actually you need to flip him back over otherwise technically you haven't won yet so we're fine um, but yeah, so that was my first ever knockout with Richie, I think. Um, it's my other fights that I'd either lost or won on a judge decision. This was the, the debut of the Feather 2s. Richie was used for live events after that, but didn't really do any major competition since. This was bought, it was built as a test bed for these crappy 10 amp motor controllers that I found on eBay. So I added some more armor to it, which was <laughs> in, in, in the attic in my second year flat. There was all these bits of chipboard. The body of it was an old desk and I covered it all in duct tape to kind of eat, both hold it together and add some aesthetic. I had quite a good time at Burgess Hill because, you know, when you turn up with a robot that's this bad, you have very little expectation of it. So this was against Soundwave, which was one of Will Thomas's horizontal spinners. There was very few Beatles at this point. I mean, Beatles were only just starting to be a thing in 2015, in the UK anyway. The motors had kind of fallen apart by this point anyway, so the gears were somewhat meshing, somewhat not. But Soundwave just went around and cut a, cut a disc depth slot the entire way around the robot. <laughs> Um, but I, I, I do my classic, go lurk by the pit and hope they fall in <laughs> Um My drive is working just enough to kind of count as manoeuvrable. And then it's like, ha, nudge. And uh, it gets him in. Because Beatles at that point had a habit of just dying. This was my full lineup in Amazing. June of 2015. This was after Nuts has appeared. Which is a convenient segue. Let's do um, the Nuts <laughs> thing. Let's do bigger robots. <laughs> 